Okay, so here's what I wound up getting from my question too when I was doing my sort of brainstorming and doing my looking around, searching around. Cardiovascular disease, of course, can also be called heart disease. I saw also that cardiovascular disease is often abbreviated CVD. So I wrote that down. Um, and coronary artery disease kind of fits the mold. I didn't, I wasn't sure. I probably won't use it for my search. I just jotted it down to remind myself that there are other more specific kinds of cardiovascular disease that I could be looking at if I wanted to focus in on more specific types um, of diseases that could be treated by these supplements or prevented by these supplements, right? Refolic acid may or may not matter, but I noticed that folate is um, an alternate name for it. For vitamin D, I also came across this cholecalciferol, which is the um, chemical name of the vitamin D that is used as a supplement. So if some articles are more specific, they may say cholecalciferol instead of vitamin D. Maybe, maybe not, but I just jotted it down. With regard to supplements, you could say supplement singular, supplements plural, or even supplemental or supplementary, right? So I'm going to use my... my um, is something I'm about to tell you about, a star, to get all of the word endings. This is a strategy called truncation, where you put a star, an asterisk, you know, if you hold, um, what is it, control, and then the number eight on your keyboard, that will put this asterisk there that will tell the computer to find all the word endings, right? So same thing for prevention. Prevent is a verb, but prevention is a noun. To get all the forms of the word, I'm going to do prevent star. And then I also realized that in addition to prevention, um, there's also lowering risk or reducing risk. I may, may or may not use that in my search, but keyword brainstorming is all, all about jotting things down that may or may not be helpful because you never know. So we're almost ready to begin searching, but before we can take all of these words and turn them into meaningful searches, we have to know a little bit more about how to construct search queries. Um, right now, we just have a ton of words, and if we just went to a search bar and popped them all in, this is not the kind of thing that will get us what we want. We have to approach this um, almost like you have to remember, again, you're talking to a computer, so it's almost like you're writing computer code when you do searching. And one trick that I just mentioned about too, the, the too many verbs issue is you can do what's called truncation or also called wild cards. You can use this asterisk or star at the end of a word stem to get all of the word endings to search for any possible endings. So the way this star works is it allows um, zero to however many characters to appear, to appear on the end of the stem that you're searching. So if I search drink with the star, I get drink, but I also get drinks, drinker or drinking. Um, if I do interview star, I also get interviewing or interviews or interviewees. If I search teach with the star at the end, I'll get teach, teacher, teachers, teaching. Note that teach is an irregular verb in English, so I will not get the past tense of taught. Um, the star works with the letters that are in the word stem. So it's not smart enough to find other version, other um, tenses of the word if, th if they're irregular, if they don't have the same, if they don't begin with T-E-A-C-H, uh, um, bottom line, they will not come back. And the star is exciting to people who learn about it, and they start to use it a lot and use it every time, you know, they have a plural or a singular. Just note that it turns off the relevancy ranking in many databases. It also turns off other cool database features. So just be sure to use the star only when you have like a ton of words that you're trying to account for the variance of. So to make sure this, um, this is coming across, um, I usually do this as a, a live uh, quiz to the class and I know I, this is a video so I'll just have to tell you. But when it comes to the word detection, how would you truncate that? Just take a second to think about it. What I would do is subtract the I-O-N and just search detect with a star at the end. That will get me detect, detects, detecting, etc. Think about how you would truncate the word children. You would do child star. That will get child and children and childhood. What about the word vaccine? This is a little bit of a thinker. 
A lot of people say just take the word vaccine and put a star on the end. But actually, what you can do is subtract the E. So just take vaccine without the E and put the star after the N. That will get you vaccine, vaccines, but also vaccination. So wherever the word starts to change, lop off all those letters and just put the star on the end of the stem. Pregnancy, you should do pregnan and put a star at the end after the second N, because that way you get pregnant uh, as well as pregnancy pregnancies. Don't use the star, as I said, if you just want to get plural. Uh, just write that out, tube or tubes, and I'll talk about what that means in, um, in a second. So the other thing is sometimes you have a phrase where both of the words and the phrase are like very common. And so sometimes you'll be doing a search on a phrase like speech sound, for example, which is part of the, the phrase speech sound disorder. And you'll get way too much stuff back because the computer is finding like the word speech in the title, but the word sound in the last sentence of the abstract and the two words aren't next to each other, but they really need to be in order for the word, the two phrase, two word phrase to, um, to represent that concept, right? Something like rooming in or high blood pressure, those can be misinterpreted by a computer, right? They can find high in the first sentence, but blood pressure in the abstract, where it might be in a sentence talking about low blood pressure, right? So when you have these situations where you need to search a phrase and you need all the words to be searched in order right next to each other, find the phrase, enclose those words in double quotes. This works in library databases. It also works in Google, by the way. If you need a more focused search in Google, you can put uh, double quotes around your search and it will be a more exclusive targeted phrase search. Really important for you to know that this cannot be combined with the truncation, the wildcard that we just talked about. You can't use a star on the inside of double quotes. And again, only use this when needed. It turns off a cool feature in PubMed, which is a database we're about to learn about. So these tricks, only use them when you feel you need them. So let's talk about more about that or trick that I was saying um, for tube or tubes. When you write search queries and you run them in library databases, you'll be using what are called Boolean logic operators. These are um, connectors between search terms and they're used to complete the phrase I want records that contain blank. So I could say I want records that contain apple and green. If I separate apple and green with a capital word and I will get back in my search records that contain both the word apple and the word green. So in the Venn diagram at the bottom of this slide, you can see that combining terms with and will only get you records back where they have both terms. It's a narrow um, search, a targeted search where you're looking for both concepts to appear in the record. On the other hand, if you combine terms with or, that means either one can appear in the record in order for it to come back. And this is really, really, really useful because we just spent a ton of time brainstorming syn synonymous keywords, right? What we're going to do in our search is use the or to combine all of them to tell the computer we don't care which of the terms is in the record. As long as one of these terms is in the record, it, we want it to come back. If I'm searching on dogs in a veterinary database, I would also want to see any record that has the word canine in it because canine means dog. So what I can do when I run my search is use dog or canine to get back either word, to tell the computer either word is of interest to me. Now, if you use the operator not, this isn't something that you'll do often, but it can, uh, can subtract things from your search. The example here is football, not soccer. I want records about football, but I do not want them to have the word soccer anywhere in the record. Not is dangerous. You shouldn't use it very much. It's useful to know. Um, times where it's useful to know is, is when a word really means two different things. The classic example is searching on the term nursing. If I search nursing, I probably mean the profession, nursing. 
Um, but uh, but uh, I'm going to get a lot of records back that are about breastfeeding because nursing mothers is another term for breastfeeding, right? So what I can do is search nursing not mothers and I can subtract all of the records that I don't want by doing it that way and that will help me um, get rid of the stuff that I don't want to see. So now if you would like to pause uh, this presentation, um, this is a little exercise to sort of test you on whether you understand the concept of not and an or. So what you're seeing here on this slide is five different pictures. In this hypothetical scenario, these five pictures make up a database with only five records in it. What I'm going to ask is for you to guess uh, how many, don't tell me which results, but just how many results will be returned for each of the following queries. How many results will be returned for the query cat or dog? And note that this is the or operator. Cat or dog in this database. How many pictures fit the criteria there? The answer is four. There are four pictures in this database that have either a cat or a dog. What you're saying with or is that either one can be present and the search will still return uh, that record. However, if I search for cat and dog, how many records will be returned in my search then? The answer is two. There are only two pictures in our database that have both a cat and a dog. So you can see and is a more exclusive targeted search. It will remove records from your search, right? How about dog not cat? The answer is one. There's only one picture here that has a dog and not a cat. What if I search the word stethoscope in this database? I'm going to get all five records back. And here's a point that's sort of unrelated to Boolean operators. If you're in a database and you search on a very, very, very common word in that discipline, like stethoscope in this database, you're going to get all the records back. So keep in mind when you're choosing keywords, if you just choose a very generic keyword, you're going to get way too much stuff back. How about if I searched bunny or dog and cat? You pause the presentation and give that some thought and try to guess. The answer is going to be on the next slide. So bunny or dog and cat is a trick question because what does that really mean? Does it mean it can have either a bunny or a dog but it must have a cat? Because in that case only two pictures meet the criteria. Or does it mean it can have a bunny or a dog and a cat? Because in that case three pictures meet the criteria. Don't worry about this too much, but what I am showing you is that when you're using these Boolean operators, there's a way to do this that makes it totally, you will never run into this problem. You will always be understood by the computer. So just search the way I am going to show you and you will never run into this problem. I'm just trying to scare you into doing it my way, essentially, is what I'm doing. Okay. So what are we going to do with these newfound skills of and and or and all this? Well, I want to take you back to the table that I made where we were doing keyword brainstorming on that, um, you know, pre-hospital intubation about, you know, patients who had cardiac arrest out of hospital, right? You remember that I decided I had three major concepts, pre-hospital, tracheal intubation, and cardiac arrest. And you'll see that here are all the terms that I decided were synonymous. What I am going to do is for each column, these are the terms within that same column, I am going to combine them with or, because for the purpose of my search, they are all synonymous, right? And actually, you'll remember that for tracheal intubation, I decided that the better keyword is just intubation. Um, and I have to think about the, the plural as well as singular, and here I have cardiac arrest or heart arrest. They mean the same thing. So I'm going to wind up with these long strings of ORD synonymous keyword terms. 
What I'll tell the computer when I search pre-hospital or pre-hospital or paramedic, etc., is that any one of these terms is of interest to me. Only one of them has to appear in the record in order for the record to come back. When I'm putting and between these two terms, what I'm saying is I want at least one word related to the pre-hospital concept and at least one word related to intubation and at least one word related to cardiac arrest. If a record has at least one of each of these three sets of words, it's probably related and I'll probably want to take a look at it. And that's what I want in my search results, right? So now you're going to take a second to try this. Go back, look at part two of your worksheet, and for each column, remember, for each column, only the words in that column, combine them with or. Then fill in the little table that looks like this. So your ands should connect each string of ORed keywords.